The Object Guru here, joined by... The Unabridged Gamer. To talk a PC Game Pass from Microsoft, uh, which they were kind enough to send me a free PC Game Pass month. So thanks for that, Microsoft. I do really do appreciate it. Or I guess I'm thanking Xbox specifically, because they've got a whole Xbox store on the PC. It is a weird situation. It I, is it is very confusing at this point, yeah. It's it's a bit of a strange system to engage with. I'm not going to pretend it's not. Like, uh, so I just want to talk about the, the weird drama. And if they, they end up resending my code because of this, I'm going to completely understand it. So I'm going to talk about the weird drama of trying to get this thing set up. So I'm in Canada, you know. I've, I've never hidden that fact. I'm Canadian. And so they sent me the code, and they're like, here, enjoy. And so I go and I put it into my Xbox account, as one does. And it says, uh, PC Game Pass is not available in Canada. I'm like, I know for a fact Game Pass is available in Canada. Because every time I load up my Xbox, they try to get me to buy Game Pass. So why wouldn't PC Game Pass be available in Canada? Uh, but it's not. Uh, for for whatever reason, and so I open. So they're like try, and so after saying that we've we've accepted the code, it's not available. Want to in, want to install the app? And I'm like, okay, I'll install the app. So I install the app and I load it up, and I go to my library, and it turns out I already have 20 games on PC uh, Xbox because like 20 of my games that I play on the uh, Xbox also it comes with the PC version, which honestly yeah. is a really nice thing for them to do. Yeah, it's actually surprising sometimes some of the games that do have cross buy. Like I think some of the Resident Evils even do that. Yeah, and um, what I was very happy to see was you know like my um, uh, if I want to play State of Decay two, it's right there. So that is actually very convenient. So I loaded up uh, this, and so I click. I say, well, why not? I click on Game Pass, and there are no games there because again, it, I don't have Game Pass according to this thing. Mm -hmm. Weirdest thing happened. So I go to the store, and I'm just like, well, what what is available in the Xbox store? And there's all of these games that say, install now. I'm like, what? So I click on Lies of P, and I'm like, well, I've been curious about this. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, install now. And I'm like, so you're saying I can install this right now? And they're like, yeah. So I click on it, and I say, install now. And it installs. And I load it up, and I'm playing this game that I haven't bought, and they're telling me I don't have Game Pass, but I'm definitely playing the game. And so I go far enough to get a trophy, and the trophy appears on my Xbox account, but I go back to the Xbox app, and it does not count me as having played the game or unlocking any trophies. <laughs> and so when I go to my library... I go click on Game Pass. No, click on Own Games. Lies of P not there. Click on Installed Games. There it is. So yes, uh, I have used some workaround they didn't expect, but they sent me a code and I'm able to play the games. But I feel like I'm doing it through some kind of a backdoor they haven't patched out yet. It's honestly not even surprising to hear because understand, I tried to use uh, Game Pass back when I um. Just had an Xbox One and a PC, and my PC was definitely the better platform of the two to play a game on at that point. Right. Um, and yeah, no, it, it it refused to install anything except on my C drive, which is a known issue. It has been a known issue since like 2016 <laughs> that sometimes it will just refuse to install and or boot something that on anything on but your C drive. Oh my God. And like th this is, this is endemic of an issue that has been with the Xbox brand for a while. Because like it's well established that despite being someone who absolutely loved the PS3, who still has his PS3 hooked up and everything, Sony has very much lost me in the last couple of years because they just keep putting out the same game over and over again. Well, they do like their open world collectathons. Yes, everything must be cinematic, semi-open world action with dramatic zoom pans and so <laughs> much graphical rendering power being used so we can see every bit of Kratos' nipple hair. Which you have to uh, understand, if you don't see every blade of grass that gets crushed, 
when an ogre slams his hammer down, you're not getting the full PlayStation experience. Yeah. So anyway, um, so that's kind of where I'm at, and so it's why I've been enjoying using Xbox, but oh my word, they still just don't seem to understand their own frigging other half of the company with Windows, because apparently... They genuinely just thought that people on PC didn't like Halo. They didn't understand that Halo 2 Vista was just a garbage port. <laughs> and this is also the same deal with Gears of War was Cliff Bozinski and, and Tim Sweeney just being like, well, people pirated Gears of War 1, so we won't bring the rest to PC. The reason they pirated it is because even today with modern internet speeds, I tried to install a legit copy of Gears of War 1 on PC it took twice as long for the DRM check than it did for literally anything else. <laughs> like, you yeah, just like... don't seem to understand how to make this platform work. And this is just the latest unfortunate insult of just, oh my gosh, ask someone from Valve to walk you through this. Well, the crazy part is, with Gears of War 1, you know, it's like, how many of those people pirating it bought a copy first and then were like, oh, screw this? And just downloaded a cracked version, even though they had paid for the game. Which, oh, by the uh, way, they're legally entitled to do if you paid for the game. You can crack it all you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's absurd. No, it is crazy. Uh, also, one funny thing, though, when I was trying to go through the games to play, like, I don't want to be mean about this, but the Xbox apps store has only three ways to sort games. A to Z. Z to A, or um, not, they don't call it recommended. They call it like. Relevant. Relevant. Thank you. Relevance. Relevant to what? <laughs> They've decided I badly want to play FIFA games based on what? You have. Everyone else says. <laughs> like, you have relevant. Uh, you have. I got, you know, I don't know what the number is. 500,000 gamer score. You can see my library of across, you know, Xbox 360 and One and Xbox Series X. You can see the 1,200 video games I've played. And the recommendations, the relevant games to me are a bunch of sports games when I have never played a sports game ever. I'm going to be honest here. How the are you relevance, so bad at this? Like, even on the Xbox, the relevant options are always pretty darn terrible they okay. just it's like yeah it, it, that's not something that's even like you un slightly unique unfortunately but it's because like, there's there's no way to like you know narrow your searches there's no way to search by price there's no way to search by what's now on you, game pass now that you can do on xbox which is again a part where i'm just like why why can't i find a way to do what what is happening why isn't this We've solved this problem. Yeah. Well, if I go to um, if I go to the Xbox's website, just Xbox.com, I can get a list of every Game Pass game. But then when I go to the app, you can't. So it's like I ha so if I want to browse what I can play with my you know temporary Game Pass work uh, work around, I have to go to the Xbox store, browse the games, and be like, oh, I think I'll try that, and then go to the app and then manually type in the title I'm looking for. I'm like, is it the nineties? <laughs> it is, is this so hard to do? I, I don't know. And it is such a shame because again, as a, like a service, as a bargain for anyone working on a budget. Oh my game, God. There's fantastic. such, but yeah, no, nah, there is, I, I don't I don't understand. I, oh, I really done such don't. a bad job of this. It, it, the it, this yeah. feels like a very solved problem. And to be clear, again, I'm not saying that Sony has been doing, you know, in any outstandingly better thing. The new store they have for the PS4 and PS5 is terrible. Oh, yeah. I so miss, you know, the mid two thousands PS3 store. It wasn't outstanding, but here's the key thing. It functioned. It, it did. worked. Yeah. No, it, it, it is an issue. I'm not going to disagree with that. Uh, pretty bad one, actually. Um, although I will say this. Uh, there's nothing more garbage than the PlayStation Store on PC. 
I don't know if you've ever been there, but I defy you. I defy you to go there and find me a screenshot or a video of a game. At least when you're on your uh, PlayStation, you go to the store, like a video comes, you click on a game, a video comes up immediately, and then you can scroll through the screenshots. Like, there is no way to find out what a game looks like or what a game is about, clearly. Like, just any visual sense of the game on the PlayStation Store on PC, uh, I, have, I have no idea why the website is this bad. But let's talk about some <laughs> games I got to play because of this wonderful Game Pass program. So I'm just like, well, what would I not, you know, run out and buy? And the answer is, well, this one I probably would run out and buy. Uh... Little Kitty Big City. Oh my god. Have you seen this thing? I played the demo for it. It's the best Toy Story 2 spiritual successor I think I've ever played. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my god. I can't believe how adorable this game is. Like it is, it is driving me crazy with how adorable it is. Like this cat, you can just like, oh, I'll use my stretch emoji, uh, my stretch gesture. I'll use my yech gesture. You pounce on birds. You knock uh, things off of shelves. You, you hang out with you hang out with crows, and you meet a tanuki that is working on portal technology to get you around the city faster. It is, oh my god, this game is it's a delight. It is so, so delightful. Every new thing you do is so playful and fun and cute, and every new character you meet is written so charmingly. Like, I, I cannot recommend this game highly enough. I'm not saying I'm going to run out and buy a copy as well, but I might get a copy as a gift for somebody. <laughs> it is it is so delightful. Like, this cat you're playing as is uber cute. But everybody else is great as well. There's other cats. There's adorable dogs. I found a dog who had lost his rainbow tennis balls, and you have to find his rainbow tennis balls for him. Like, I, I, you almost don't know where how, where to start with how adorable this game is. They've just done such a great job of doing the cat stuff cute and right without it feeling, I don't know, too childish. Is that is that a mean way to say it? Like, it's a game that's completely appropriate for like five year olds. Like, I doubt they will have the motor control to like do a good job of it. But it's like, there's nothing inappropriate here. There's it's not saucy. condescending. It's not, that is what I'm trying to say, yes. Like, it is not condescending. It is not childish. It is just, we have this world that is sweet and charming, and we think you're going to love it. And they have built this, you know, version of some city in Japan. And you play as a cat who is a house cat and has never been out in the world before. And so they managed to fill the entire game with this sense of wonder and joy of, of exploration and seeing everything for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that is such a tough tone to capture. Oh, and yeah. I'm blown away by what a good job they've done of it. Well, that's it's like there's a reason I cite I, Toy Story 2, and I don't just mean like thematically the whole you're out on your own in the world thing, but like they're literally, I don't know if you've played Toy Story 2 for like the PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast, but oh, I did. this so captures the vibe of that, the balance of that. It is so incredible that someone finally, because like even out of every ridiculous thing that Sony has done, they at least had the common sense to be like, this is one of the first ones we need to have in our PlayStation Classics. Oh, yeah. I got that. That completely. Like, they understand the like what great vibes that had, what a beautiful world it had. And, I mean, how important it was for the genre of that kind of exploration. Mm -hmm. Right? And like, they did such a good job with it. And this is just like, the and for me, it's the next logical step forward. It's really cool. And, yeah, it's... Sad that it took us 20 years to get there? Yeah, it's sad, but also not surprising given <laughs> how this industry works. I can't wait for, you know, like in the next 10, well, actually now nine years until, um, you know, someone makes the next inevitable remember me like that everyone's yeah. like, wow, this is incredible. Why, Why do people make more make of these? Before? I know. <laughs> well, every time they make one, you don't buy it. So that's kind of on you. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, then I played another Crab's Treasure. 
Which, uh, have you tried that yet? The Crab Souls. Like, I have not tried that because I kind of am... I, I'm on a break from both Souls likes and Metroidvanias. There's just gotcha. so many of First them. First off, for to be clear, all Souls likes are Metroidvanias. That's just a fact. And if people want to pretend they don't understand that, you know, go back go back to video game terminology school. All Souls like are, are Metroidvanias. It's all about opening shortcuts and uh, getting a key to access a new location, getting a power to go to a new place. Come on. Let's mm-hmm. be honest here. They're all just yeah. Metroidvanias. And that's fine. I love them. Uh, more than you do, obviously. But this one is another good job of uh, very much so being a... Uh, <laughs> like, getting the comedy right. It gets the comedy right. And that is what separates it from so many of the other souls like I've played, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, it's, it's cute, and it's funny. And it, the game starts with you being a crab that's just hanging out in a tidal pool. And an evil queen has taken over your land, and so now she demands taxes from everybody. And so a loan shark, in the form of an actual shark, and by actual shark I mean a reacher grabber that someone is holding off camera, and the head of it looks like a shark's head. (laughs) But, like, all of the characters treat this reacher... Like, everything else is just crabs, right? And (laughs) lobsters and such. But everyone treats this reacher grabber with a shark head... As if it's an actual shark, even though it's, you know, just obviously being stuck in from off camera on a stick. Like, it's such a, like, an interesting, like, uh, casting choice, for lack of a better term. Because it gives the whole thing this janky look that I really appreciated. Uh, But this is a perfect example of, apart from the game mechanics, right, which I think they've done a really good job of making the crab stuff feel like the hermit crab stuff feel completely locked in with what the game is because unlike most souls like which a kind of insult you forever blocking this game is built around using your shell to defend yourself you're a crab that's what you do and so like the key part is yeah there's still a parry but if you just want to focus on blocking, you can do that. And gradually your shell be, will be destroyed because you're a hermit crab. You swap out to a new shell. And there are like 80 different shells or something, uh, 70 or 80 different shells, and like 20 different shell powers. So each pow- shell has one of four, um, well, one of 20 different. So there are like four shells for each power, which you... Like, th- shoot bubbles at an enemy, or do a rolling charge at an enemy, or you electrify your shell so the next time you block, it will hurt the enemy and you won't take any shell damage, or your shell becomes invulnerable for the next five hits. Like, there's constant ways of mixing up the way you do Souls-like combat and play a lot of Souls-like games. This one has the most different feeling combat I've felt in ages because it's the first time I played a souls like game that didn't feel like um it had contempt for me because I was blocking you know <laughs> which uh is something I'm like yeah I'm playing defensively why are you so and most souls like games are like no we never want you to play defensively yes there's a poise meter and yes we've given you shields we just don't want you to use them and if you use them, we're going to make the game actively worse. Whereas this, another crab's treasure is like, no, if you want to block, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> it's not insulting you for the concept, for using a mechanic that they've included in the game. Oh, and it also has, um, you know, easy game, quote unquote, features to give you more health and give the enemies less health. And uh, the one the one I turned on, which I'm like, every soul's like needs this. You know what happens if you get killed by a boss? nothing you respawn 10 feet away from the boss so you can do the boss fight again it doesn't have the souls like oh i got killed by the boss too bad let's do uh let's do the five minute walk back to where the boss is (laughs) there's none of that crap in the game so i was i was very happy with it and it is genuinely funny there's entertaining dialogue there's hilarious item descriptions and they've done a fantastic job of like using the um the undersea milieu visually for the Mm -hmm. level design in a very entertaining way i mean it's all very spongebob you know (laughs) them walking around in the garbage of the over uh overworld 
But I mean, that's what this is. It's it's a SpongeBob Souls like, and they've really done an exceptional job of building a world that, that is consistent with how everyone should interact in this. So yeah, I'm I'm actually really enjoying another Crab's Treasure more than I expected I would. I'm glad. And to be clear, it's not like um I do want to clarify, it's not like I in- inherently hate Metroidvanias or Souls likes. <laughs> Um, cause like one of my favorite games of all time is Arkham Asylum. Uh-huh. Um, but it's more a matter of there's two, I, it is my, all they make. I'm not going to deny, I'm not going to say you're not right. It's all they make. Yeah. It, it's, it's just like my dudes, there are other, genres. We, we, there are other genres. Like the only other genre that's getting close to the saturation level at this point is maybe boom shoots. <laughs> I know there's so many of them. Speaking of, uh, bolt gun is on, uh, Game bolt Pass. gun it's bolt, pronounced bolt gun sorry yes i wasn't saying it right all caps and you're supposed to say it with all of the exclamation points that it wanted to add uh, but it's yes it's very 90s with a z at the end instead of an s <laughs> oh my god well i mean it's got orcs in it and they spell all their uh, s's with well most of their s's with z so there you go uh yes yeah, so i did play lies of p and uh, perfectly acceptable. I mean, it's just, it's being, uh, basically some developer said, well, if they're not going to make, if, if they're just never going to make, um, uh, Bloodborne 2, let's just do that. You know, it's fine. Uh, it wants to be Bloodborne. Everything about his design is very Bloodborne-esque and it really has that feel. There is blocking, but very little blocking, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how it is possible, and you, you've you seen the game, what the game looks like, right? Uh-huh. I, I really have a feeling that Pinocchio might be one of the most, maybe the most sexualized male video game character in a AAA game ever. Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like he, yeah, he's giving Dante a serious run for his money. No, it's it's not. There's no comparison. Dante is not sexualized the way Pinocchio is sexualized. So the game starts, and the the blue fairy has to wake him up, and he is just like asleep in this chair, wearing his you know ruffled silk shirt that's open you know down to the middle of his chest, and he's got the hair draped across his eyes and he's got the soft features and the freckles under his blue eyes and you're like oh my god like this is like it is it is staged exactly as a princess who needs to be kissed to be woken up right it is that that is the kind of staging this character gets and so you get into it right and you start playing the game and he's running around in these tight pants and this flowy silk shirt and you fight your way through this um, train station and you go out of the train station and it is pouring rain outside and I'm like okay, Uh, before I step out into it, I'm like is his shirt going to become see-through in the rain? (laughs) That is going to (laughs) determine basically, my rating for the game is going to be determined by whether or not his shirt gets see-through in the rain and it does. So essentially he steps He out. is full on Tubi at this point. Basically, yes. Like, no, but the weird part is, I've played plenty of Nier Automata. Like, she's got a black outfit on by default. He is wearing an outfit that is designed to make him become shirtless when he gets soaking wet. Like, and the thing is, the game, here's how the game wants you to keep wearing this outfit, right? There are other costumes he can wear, but they don't have stat effects. All of the stat effects are on items that are not visually depicted in the game. Interesting. So it's like his, his like pretty boy soaking wet see-through outfit, I think they want, because like on the cover, he's wearing this jacket and maybe I can find the jacket somewhere in the game. He's not wearing that in the game I played. (laughs) Like, the degree to which this character is lovingly depicted, like, and lovingly shot by the cutscenes, like, I, it is a level of sexualization. I'm just saying, I don't know that I've ever seen in a male character in a AAA game. Like, it's 
this is a this game is about how hot Pinocchio is to a degree that you generally just don't see with male characters. Okay, I know one other example. Okay. I do know one other example. Adam Jensen, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. He literally has a shower scene. That's true. Yes. And if Adam Jensen's shower scene was like 80% of the gameplay, <laughs> you would be talking about the level of what's going on in Lies of P. But that's the only other example I can really think of. I do remember seeing that scene and be like, okay, yes, we are definitely going for femme gays with Adam Jensen. They, they, they know what the, la- what the ladies and the gays are asking for here with this yeah, one. But the, the weird, the fact that this guy is, Adam Jensen is, he is a buff muscle bro. Mm-hmm. That's fair. It's fair to say. He's a buff muscle bro with a robot arm and cyber eyes. The thing about, uh, and yeah, does Pinocchio have a robot arm? He does, but it's like everything about him is presented so visual, like he is so soft and he is so rounded. And again, tight jeans and a puffy shirt that gets soaking wet. Like Adam Jensen, you can make the argument that there is a lot of female gays and stuff and stuff there for the gays, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, In the way he is presented, but he is also a muscle bro that anyone will have, you know, that any dude would quote unquote enjoy imagining themselves playing if you accept that's why people play video games. And there are some people who do, but that's a whole other debate we're not having right now. Yep. My point about Pinocchio is he is an action twink. <laughs> he really is. Like I started this game playing. Now I'm hearing like, that in the bolt gun voice. Action twink. Action twink. Like I started this game playing as a rain soaked, like mega twink. Okay. And I haven't done that before in a triple A game. And I don't think there's anything you can point to me about like an action twink with a, effectively a bare chest for the whole first half hour of the game. I, I don't know that you can point to me anything else and say, yeah, no, I think this is untrod territory. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting because, you know, we just talked about Stellar Blade. And I would make the argument that this game is sexualizing Pinocchio, at least the first half hour, more than that game is sexualizing Eve. And I know that's a reach, but damn, does he get soaking wet wet in the first half I hour of this game. I think you could make the argument, honestly, that it does a better job of it. That, that I could definitely okay. hear is like a thing, because like... A lot of people have talked about Stellar Blade and also in the context of, like, Hades, because um, arguably Hades might be one of the few other examples, really, of, you know, doing someone who is, uh, I don't know what the correct parlance here is, twinky? Twinkish. Uh, Twink adjacent. Because, yeah, because, like, you know, obviously the lead of Hades isn't explicitly that he does still have some muscles, but he, he is definitely made to be more just generally aesthetically pleasing. And now Hades too, everyone is just going on about how every kind of body is depicted in just the most flattering way humanly possible in, um, Hades too. That's fantastic. Yeah. They even actually have like plus sizes that are nicely rendered. That's fantastic. And rare. Oh, yeah, exceptionally rare. Yeah. So, yeah, I just... Uh, so, if, if one thing I want to thank Microsoft for today in sending me this code, I might have waited years to play Lies of P, and I would have regretted that. Because, again, I am, I am blown away by how obvious this is. Because, you know, uh, my friend Brian, who, you know, always wants me to talk more about Dead to Rights because it's the best game. Uh... <laughs> He's not wrong, right? When you talk about the way that game sexualizes Jack Slate, I very much think it does, but in a way that the developers had no idea what they were doing. Like, they had no idea how much they were female gazing and gay gazing the character of Jack Slate. I think they're guys who tried to do performative masculinity, like, and they accidentally went so far past it, it became like camp iconography, right? 
Yeah, no, I can definitely believe that. Because let's not forget that Rogue Warrior was like also trying to be all kinds, <laughs> and it ended up sounding more like he was weirdly aggressively hitting on the enemies. I know, it was so strange. Whereas this one, Liza P, very much is, I think very much, knows exactly what it's doing. Like, this is the female gaze, right? This is the female gaze in the way it's presenting its main character. And I just think it's kind of amazing that you don't see that. Like, you're right that that is Dante as well. I just think it is turned to 11 here. Like, Dante oh, is very yeah, much the female gaze presentation of an action hero, especially when Virgil gets added. But... Like Pinocchio is is another step above. It is another tier over that. So yeah, no, I'm yeah. glad I got the chance to play it. And thank you for that uh, game pass. Yeah, and I, I for the record, I will say, yeah, Virgil definitely, by all criteria, and also as I literally was introduced to Devil May Cry by an ex who's just like, this is what femme gaze action games would look like. This, yeah. was, this was always her insistence. Like, this is what that would look like. Yeah, and, and any cutscene involving Virgil is what that looks like. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he does it a lot better than Dante. And that is the weird thing for me is like, as much, and I know someone will complain in the comment section for me saying this, but especially DMC Devil May Cry Virgil, like he is so made for like that whole space that absolutely like i cannot i cannot deny that for a second like come on oh my god all right so yes uh, i guess i'm very happy to be getting these checked out on game pass and i'm gonna keep te- checking out i'm finally gonna play bolt gun <laughs> <laughs> sorry for alarming you if you uh <laughs> if that did uh but yeah so expect us to come back and check out some other stuff that's available on game pass and uh maybe i'll even get game pass on xbox at some point so it isn't such a chore to use yeah yeah dear microsoft great service now could you just make it not suck on pc <laughs> it's like didn't you guys invent computers am i crazy here because i feel like you guys invented computers it's even tricky to use on the Steam Deck, I'm told, which is just extra ridiculous. Ugh. It's like, come on. Come on, it, like, it. I know people who lapsed as PC gamers who, the second the Steam Deck hit, they're like, oh my gosh, I suddenly am playing all of my Steam library. I have torn through my backlog. Wow. Damn. So, yeah, like, well... get on there. You'll get a lot more people playing your Game Pass. <laughs> all right. So, that's... Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll check back in with more Game Pass soon when I've had a chance to play a few more games. Uh, but for now, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, play my game, Clown in the Woods. I keep forgetting people to tell people to do that. It's free on itch.io. Uh, .io, and as someone who played it, he can tell you it's fun. Yes, you will die a lot. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's that. We'll see you back here for more. But until then, I'll say that's right. Au revoir.